You're listening to the Go Lightly Martial Hour on freedomtalkradio.net. freedomtalkradio.net All right, we are back with show number 272 that I've called The Road to Perdition. There is a movie like that, I'm sure, out there. I think it was um, Tom Hanks was in it. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, The Road to Perdition. I'm pretty sure there is. But anyway, oh, yeah. no, nothing to do with the movie. Forrest Gump. Well, that was another movie. <laughs> Now this is this is our own movie. <laughs> it's called the D- the DVD, <laughs> and this part of it is the road to perdition. I I am going to be uh, reading more of this this marvelous piece of work that Adam Yates is putting together. Greater than the Magna Carta, it will be. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I'll read more from that. Again, it's it's still a work in pro progress we are up to the summary end of it but it's a work in progress and a little bit of tweaking and all that and uh, having a lot of fun with it and just getting kicked out of uh, children Ch- God is a child hello <laughs> started out started out yeah absolutely but at heart that's what it's all about that's why he said it's the, ch- it's the kingdom is for the oh. children I've and never forgotten my childhood. No. How I thought as a baby. Mm. And uh, as I thought as a baby, I, I mean, at a very, very young age, less than two years of age, I spoke fluently mm. and was thinking that all adults are idiots. Mm. And my parents had no idea of the intellect of their child because I never spoke to them. Mm. I thought, what do you, why would you talk to these morons? Mm. I mean, that's what I thought, right? There's <laughs> another movie like that too, isn't there, where, where there's the baby. Is there something about Garth? Oh, there was one made about up. About Garth and, and like, so it's the, the adult intellect inside the baby. A very baby. stupid movie came out. Bruce Willis had one at one stage where a baby was talking. Oh, yeah. It was I think ridiculous. That's yeah, right. But, uh, yeah, but uh, can you imagine a little child like that being plumped into a uh, into hell? I mean, here it is Rothschild having to all places, right? Hmm. And uh, I'm thinking about the speed of light and the Great Pyramid and how clouds are formed in the atmosphere when I was two years of age. Mm. Right? Mm. Now, uh, adults, and I think most adults to this day have no idea how a cloud forms in the sky. Mm. Yeah. Chemtrails. Oh, <laughs> that's that's the airplanes. Clouds come from airplanes. But to give you some insight, you know, if, let's say a mind of a 15-year-old bright child Right? Mm. Well, put that into a two year old body. Mm. Then you got some idea of the dilemma I was in. Mm. And time dragged on so slow. Mm. I was like, oh, boring. Boring. Mm. You used to have that so dream. I, well, I just had, I had to think everything out. I'd go and examine everything I could and try and mm. work out this, that. But uh, as I say, I already knew about the pyramid. So I was telling my brother about the pyramid, hmm. he had no idea, and he's 8.88 years old than I, so that made him say 10, 11 years of age, hmm. when we're still at Rothschild Avenue in Rosebury, hmm. what I'm telling you about the Great Pyramid, what it all meant, I mean, the speed of light, how Einstein was wrong, all this kind of stuff. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, where does that come from, you know, you bring it with you. Right. That's in the, the DNA, point. that's the whole point of it. It's in the uh, DNA. Yes, that's, that's what... When, you, what, when you're born, you're I mean, 
you're given a new body to, to sort of whip into shape and uh, allow your soul to, to build it, to say. And um, it comes with knowledge. It's already in there. It's already in your DNA, the knowledge. I mean, the soul is the uh, reciprocal of knowledge of the past. So in my case, I had the crucifixion and I had the birth. And uh, I still remember things as a child happening in, in uh, Bethlehem and these places. Mm. Jerusalem, Egypt, and I don't remember it all. Mm. So that's why I don't have to look too far just to, to stir up a memory, that's all, and then go check it out. Because with modern technology, we can go measure things, mm. which is what we're doing. For example, there's two mountains on, on Sri Lanka that um, one is slightly higher than the other, but when you average them, it's the area of the strata terrain. Then there's another one on Tahiti that's the height number in feet, which is the area of the strata terrain. So you can then triangulate the distances between the three. Right? We draw arcs, and where the three arcs cross at a certain location on the earth, it'll identify something else, and on and on it goes. So I was, I was trying to put together um, how to shroud it to rim because it is the burial plot of Jesus. And I mean, I, I, I looked, I've been watching several, probably 30 um, of the uh, Shroud of Turin documentaries. And they're all so stupid, isn't it? They're still arguing the point whether it is a medieval forgery. <laughs> because the Jews, God love the Jews, I love Jews. Um, they, 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 this morning, they don't burn very well. Yes, John confirmed that. They don't mm. burn very well at all. Sort of puts a hole in the old furnace idea of being burned mm. in the uh, concentration camp, doesn't it? Mm. You can't. What's it take about four hours or something to burn a body if it's fueled with air forced coal? Oh, well, now in the crematoriums, the modern crematoriums. Yeah, which has got all the equipment. It takes what hours? Hours, absolutely. To do one body. Mm. So a pizza oven, as they had in uh, for their furnaces in. Yeah. Well, it's like a pizza oven today. Yeah, that was, that was used for burning clothes. That could be a new joke. Was that? Well, how many hours does it take to burn one Jew in a pizza oven? <laughs> ah, but how many do you fit in the ashtray of a Volkswagen? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> uh, now, Perry. You were talking about something brilliant. You were talking about the shroud. Oh, the shroud. Anyhow, the, the date that uh, Cook landed on. Uh, New Zealand. Now in New Zealand, he measured with a Harrison clock. It took him six months, a longitude clock, invented by my relative. And uh, <clears throat> turns out it's 888 miles, which is between latitudes of the most northern tip and the most southern tip of New Zealand. Two islands, right? Three islands, actually. Mm. And um, 888, of course, is the geometry of the Jesus. Now, he had spotted on his way up the Messier Common. Mm. So you add eight, 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 eight days to that and it gives you my birthday. Mm. 2015, 14, 13. Something, I don't forget, so many numbers there. But something significant. When I'm 69, that's probably. Um, it also gives you the cross angle of Milky Way galaxy date from the Messier discovery in France, which was uh, the 8th of the 8th, 1769. So you just add 8, 8, 8, 8, 8 days to that, it gives you a crossing. Not the true crossing, because that was wrong anyhow, but the Gregorian calendar that mm. everyone thought, because everyone's too stupid, these scientists are all stupid, right? They don't even consider that the Gregorian calendar is out by 365 days, plus they added 10 days to it mm. in 1582. And on that date, the sun rises, the sunset, where they did it in bloody Rome was 666 minutes. I mean, every school child should know that. It's all obvious stuff, right? Mm. And they're all arguing, what's the 666 six, 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 All this bullshit. Here's Solomon received 666 talents of bloody gold of his, <laughs> of his descendants of Solomon. <laughs> Moab wives and Ammonite wives, right? I suppose they have a thousand wives, or concubines and wives. Well, yeah, chafe lips because kiss them all good night. Took hours. <laughs> days. <laughs> For days. Line up. 
Do you think his nickname was Two? So, the, <laughs> the uh, Schroeder to Rim, of course, they're talking about the carbon dating on it. I mean, here's a, a lady, an American lady and a husband, they look at the photographs and they say of the uh, sample that it's two pieces of cloth which has been stitched together and one is dyed and it's got cotton in it. Hmm. Well, the shroud is linen. Yes. Right? Now, if you look at your Bible, when it's talking about the white linen hmm. in the book of Revelation or Daniel or so forth, Isaiah, uh, it's all referring to the garment you're going to wear because of the cross, because of the blood of the cross, which redeemed, which is a sort of a similitude of the stupidity of the Mosaic law that God can't see sin through the blood of a lamb, hmm. of an animal, right? Hmm. So Jesus, last sacrifice, lamb, seven teeth, chisel, teeth removed, blah, 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 um, is the last sacrifice. Hmm. So God himself pours his blood out from the cross and now it's on the shroud. Now, they, these people are so stupid that even though it was arranged and the people who got their new laboratories, million pounds a piece in England for a start, mm. after they come up with a date of the middle centuries, mm. 1360 to 12 something, mm. right? So therefore it's a forgery. Mm. Right? Like, who paid the money? They look at the test. There's a protocol. You take six pieces of cloth, and each has a piece and not to communicate with each other. Mm. So they take one piece of cloth, divide and it up divide into three, into <laughs> which was part of the bit that was sewn on right. in the fire after mm. the fire in fifteen what, ninety two or something. Eighty four or eighty two or whatever. Whatever. It was. <laughs> whatever. So it was the point being it was uh, December the fourth, which is the same as mm. the date of uh, King William the Lion mm. birth and death. And the date I, I found was given a, 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 a book, Australian Mercantile Law, on, in 1999 on that date, which is a miracle when the angel told me to do the numbers, and it comes up with 3168, blah, blah, blah. If you haven't heard the story, I'm not going to say it again. So, keep up. This is the whole point. So, observation of details is what it's all about. So, we've got the, the uh, Shroud of Turin, and the area of it is... Uh, the same number as the height of the highest mountain in Tahiti that Cook was on in the same date when he went to New Zealand where his first act as an invading English conqueror, if you like, mm -hmm. claiming it for England, never asking the natives because that's the whole idea, especially as it's the natives, so they did it in another way by the mercantile law. Mm. And uh, his first deed was to shoot a young fella who grabbed his sword and started running up the beach with it, stealing it. Like he could have got it back, just asked the chief to give him his sword back. Right? No, he shot him dead. Now the date was the same date that in 1978 they opened up the Schroeder to Rim for examination by the scientist and the same date that I arrived back in Australia in 1996. Mm. So you see the synchronicity here. Yeah, it was 1532. Yeah. The 15, phone. was it? 32. 30, of course. Yeah. So you look that number up and that can cause and see what you get. And I'm getting all sorts of strange things. It just goes off forever. I, this is my problem. I'll go off on, on tangents and it'll take me two hours to write it all down and come back, which is all very relevant. But who am I talking to? Mm. Like, I've got a brick outside. I brought it out the other day, you know. I often talk to it because I get more sense out of it. See what I'm saying? Must have talked to a brick. I did now, say that the other day. Eh? <laughs> I did say that in communications with Adams. Yeah, it's like talking uh, to a brick wall. <laughs> At least you can punch the brick wall. Which now. is what the uh, bloody uh, swedge do anyway. They bob to a brick wall. <laughs> yeah, which was a wall built by Cyrus to Yahweh. So yes. they don't know that they're bobbing back and forth, seeking at Solomon's bloody temple, the remains of it, hmm. and it's not. Hmm. It's Yahweh, mm. which is why it was destroyed in 70 AD. Mm. The Jews behind that. Lovely people, though, aren't they? Aren't they? I love them. Apparently, uh, Abe, Abe Foxman's at it again. Is he? ADL, yeah. Poor Panicking. <laughs> well, they only get six or seven million a year to. No, 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 40 million. 
40 million. Yeah. I mean, each. Six or seven employees. Yeah, each. I mean. To work in their office when. Uh, well, yes, most of them. To, to follow up all the phone calls from. Oh, there's all the sorts of Jewish well, ladies complaining about absolutely. what she overheard a workman. You know, the, the grave digger, the grave digger at the. For a Jew. Uh, for, well, yeah, just said, well, just got to wait just for this like bloody Jew. Just like getting rid of another Jew, something like that. You no, know, no, 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 he didn't. He just said, we just got to wait for this bloody Jewish funeral to be finished. Well, he could have said, bloody Christian funeral to be finished at all. But gee, he had to phone into Abe Foxman, they followed up and blah, blah, blah. Thank you for Well, they're looking for something to do, aren't they? <laughs> totally. Hello. Mind you, they've got a lot on their plate lately as the world is awakening to the hollow cost. Yeah. Lies. Show up business is no business. There's no lies. business like show up business. business. Smile and wear a law. Ethel Merman. Yeah, right. Jew. Mm. Throw another Jew on the Bobby. Seven. <laughs> yes, go on about the Shroud of Turin, babe. Well, the Shroud of Turin, there's, there's two pieces of cloth which no one has got yet. I told them years ago, but. I think one guy finally got it. Hmm. Um, the two pieces of cloth that it's made of, uh, one has an area which is uh, 171 inches long by 39.5, right? which is 6754.5 square inches. Hmm. The 6754 in the concordance of the King James Bible Strongs, hmm. which was a Catholic translation, mm-hmm. which most Catholics don't know and most Protestants don't even want to know. That's right. That would horrify them. Uh, it means um, an image, a ghost. Um, Tesla. Mm-hmm. Tesla, in the word. The five is Father, the ghost of the Father. So I was telling you that the blood on the shroud is the ghost of the Father. Right? Yes. Now, when we look at the Last Supper, the Last Supper is found. <laughs> looking at the computer. And we're looking at uh, Supper. This is the famous painting, for example, of uh, put together by what's his name? Da Vinci. Huh? Who? Da Vinci. Yeah, Leonardo da Vinci. It's actually painted on a wall, so you can't really get rid of it. Hmm. Unless you take the whole bloody building, you know what I mean? Uh, 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 I've been writing this up for the last uh, couple of hours. And um, let me see if I can find it. Oh dear. Okay. You know, I type very quickly and I put all this stuff together. Um, basically, what I'm saying in this report is um, looking at. I was, I was almost going to just send it to all these people again to sort of straighten them out. Mm. Um, the, the image, the ghost of Jesus, what is it? This God in the in the flesh means God within the body of flesh, which is the blood. Mm. The soul is in the blood. Pours out from the cross from all of the wounds. That's why the the beating was so severe. And these don't like these feel these fools when they did the crucifixion was under the behest of the Jews, and they participated in. That's where the chisel come in and and uh, the severe beating and so forth, and blood from. All over the body. Now, the point I'm making here is the blood flows out from the cross, and uh, you remember I said it was washed clean, went into the upright mm-hmm. hole, which was discovered by Ron Wyatt, which during the earthquake cracked the hole, and it went 26 feet down, which is God, mm-hmm. Gematria, onto the Ark of the Covenant, which its lid was split open, and the blood was found to be still alive by. Okay, so, and it has two X, X chromosomes, which is male, not, without the male, uh, being female, one parent, human parent, and God. Hmm. Got one Y chromosome. One Y, hmm. So instead of having 23, you've got one. Hmm. 
So that's scientifically proven, right? The Jews have that. Yeah, they're too stupid. They say, listen, we better repent here. Mm. Oh, no, 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 I can't do that. Mm. Right? Because it's all the rabbis. The average Jew probably would jump to the opportunity if they knew what the facts are. Mm. But they don't, of course. So it's all rabbis. They're us to mm. right? No forgiveness for So the uh, soul is gone. Body, face cloth is placed, placed over the face. It's a napkin placed over the face. Why do they do that? Well, it is uh, to stop the people who were the loved ones of Jesus seeing the face up close. Mm. What had happened to it? Bloody mess. Right? Now that became the Sidone which has the same imprint of blood that is found on the shroud itself. So they take the body to the tomb, they lay it out on the, with the napkin on the face, they take the napkin away, put it at one end, and then the shroud is pulled up over the head down to the feet. So it's on the, on the slab, body, top part is then pulled over down to the feet. So over time, the body is clean now because it's been rained on for come at some hours on the cross. It was perfectly clean. The only thing that's remaining now is a little seepage of blood because mm. the body is virtually void of blood, but the wounds have a little bit of blood in them. Mm. So that blood seeps through or in contact with the part that the body is lying on and the top because it's against the skin mm. on the front. So there's marks, there's over the head, down the front, down the back, legs, etc. When they examined the shroud in 1978, they put a scope in and they found that there's not only is there um, blood, which is basically circular or the shape of the wound, right? but it's not flowing free blood. Mm. There's blood disperses. You put blood on a piece of cloth and see what happens. You pour it on. It's going to go in all directions, right? It's mm. going to run mm. and be drawn into the dry areas. Mm. So that's not the case. They're round or they're oblong or they're whatever. Yep. So they're the shape of the wound. The shape of the wound. Okay. But there's also what they uh, virtually missed for a very long period of time. So I haven't seen it once, but I, I knew it was there. There is a faint image of what's on the other side of the clock, of the body. So there's, the face is slightly there and certain parts of the body, but very, very faint. So it could be forgiven to miss it, mm. it's so faint. On the other side, very faint anyhow, but it's only about one micron deep. So what happens? Yeah, two microns they say it is, yeah. Huh? They say it's two microns deep. Two microns, yeah. is it? Mm. Which is a, a tiny a Tiny amount, amount when the... You mm. take a razor blade to scratch it and, you, and it's gone. Mm. Right? So, um, the body is now in the tomb, void of blood. Then the blood, the soul, is coming back in. Now, as it enters the tomb, it goes through the outside of the shroud, and the faint amount of blood that was remaining as the cross bled to death, body. Now the soul is coming back in and as it's passing through, the blood passes through the outside of the linen and the slight layer of blood right, that was on the cross and left the cross is what caused the image the blood being burnt, Ooh. passing through. So therefore, the outside of the image has a spear in the right side. Now, I don't know, call me old-fashioned. I assume that if there is a crucifixion that the Romans have been doing for a very long time, right, and the Jews before that under Herod, that they knew what side the heart was on. Ooh. No? I knew that as a two-year-old. All you have to do is listen for it, right? Put your hand on it. So, they spear in the right. Missed. No, no. Hmm. They're after the heart. They've got to go to the left because they make sure that Jesus is dead. That was the idea hmm. of 
Joseph of Arathamea mm. to make sure that Jesus is dead. So they spit the left hand side, of course they did. Mm. So as the soul has left and now is coming back in with a residue of blood, right? It's going through the outside, mm. not the no, side no. against the body. the body. That's right. And therefore, they've got it all backwards. Mm. These morons that have been looking at this thing for donkey's years mm. have still got it wrong. Mm. They still won't listen. I've told them all. They still don't report it because they're stupid. Why? Because they're all basically controlled by the same entity. Mm. If you're getting financed into these businesses that are like a university, you if you want a tenure as a professor, you've got to toe the line. So if someone comes along, especially me, <laughs> and tells them what it's all about, they're not going to listen. Right? So the area of the Strait of Turin identifies three mountains, two in Sri Lanka and one in Tahiti. Well, that gives you dates when they're discovered. It gives you the heights. It gives you the latitudes and longitudes. There are several, I think it's nine or possibly more, uh, rivers in Sri Lanka that average 88.8 .8 miles or kilometres, I forget, long. So you say, well, what is the odds that the average length of X amount of rivers, two would be now, how about four now, more than that? How about, say, 15? I think that's what it is. It's either 15 or 16. Rivers that have an average length of 88.8. I think it's kilometres long. So you add all of them all up, it's all on the internet, add them all up, and divide it by 16, or divide it by 888. Just do one, two, three, four numbers and divide by 888, that's not it. Keep on going until you get it. Right? And that's what I did now, I did it originally. But I went straight to it. Just that I'm stupid now, I can't remember. But it's it, I've written about it. So the, uh, so, oh, okay, so we've got two mountains there, Adam's Peak, hello, this one. And another one, a funny name, a spot with a K. Uh, let me see here. Uh, Kiki Limana, I think it's called. So I, I, when I put something in, to my program to you. I can't put the full name in, but I think it is Kiki Kiki Kilimanjaro. Anyway, that's it. It is. Well, I've typed in the super uh, Just just the word K I K I L I. I think it's M A N A or Mana. Put it in. Kiki Mana. Yes. Have I got it right? Near uh, Nawara Elia Central, Sri Lanka. Yes, yeah, so it's a mountain. Yes, that's right. Okay. Kiki, Kiki Limana. And the other one is Adams Peak. That's right. They're um, very close together. So you can do things like um, the mountain in Tahiti is called uh, Oro. Is it Oro Hina? Or Oromina, R O Hina, I think it is R O O R O H E N A in Tahiti, and that is the same number as the area of the Shred of Turin. Yes. So it gives you three latitudes and three longitudes. <clears throat> you can do a triangulation, you have the area within, you can have the three times the height of the mountain, mm. but you do know it's got to be related to the Shred of Turin, otherwise it wouldn't be there. With the same area as the Shroud of Turin, because it all hinges on the Shroud of Turin as being the miraculous proof that Jesus resurrected from the dead. That's the whole point of this. So that's why they're trying so hard mm. to do away with it. Right now, um, I said, let me see, I'll get my computer out right? because I'm a bit out of business away from it. See if I can find it. Um, uh, The area, no, that's right, the Gematria, no, I'll get it, the first number, which is pertaining to the Last Supper, right, tells you that the cloth, cloth. 
on the table with the napkin, yes. which was common when you bought a tablecloth, you got a napkin. Why? The napkin. I'll just see if I can find the napkin here. Because right? they've got a bit brain dead today. I don't know what Uh, so it was found in the tomb by itself on one end. Now, when washing, now imagine this: it's a tablecloth, mm. right? This is why they put it. That's why I got it in the um, what I gave to the Pope, uh, Vatican III. The orientation of the altar mm. with the cloth on it has got to face east, indicating the rising of the sun. Why? Six, five, seven million tons per second is how many times the word Lord is found in the New Testament. So the rising of the sun, you face east, all churches are oriented as we found on Michael's Mount in Glastonbury. Mm, Glastonbury Tor. Remember we worked out that the since the they put the sundial no, up there that it had actually true. changed. Yes. Because we had yeah, GPS right. readings and the whole thing had moved. Yes. Right? Yeah, Indicating the axis of the earth is turning, which is mm. what the whole uh, Thing we revealed in, in uh, Folkestone was all about. Um, so we have this cloth that when you have all of the uh, food on the table, mm. right, it, use your hands, right? And your hands have to be washed in a wash bowl because you don't want to handle food and someone else. So who is, it was like Martha serving the food, mm. which was Martha, she would say serving the food and uh, the hands are washed mm. so you give the food to a person go back wash your hands grab some more food give it the but they're very, very pedantic when it comes to cleanliness yeah. these are yeah. essays right yeah. mm. all right so on the uh, the verse that's in let's see if i can find it um so we've got the napkin by itself in the tomb was a napkin by itself, used when washing one's fingers by the twelve, observing the sacredness of the last meal. It also has blood stains, as it was used to cover the face of Jesus when Jesus taken down from the cross. So brutal was the injuries. His upper and back teeth were chiselled out with a carpenter's chisel. A lamb has only seven teeth, so therefore, on the lower jaw, but one of the lamb, lambs can do it, or sheep can do a lot of damage to, to grass once they're starting to get desperate, mm. run out of grass, right? They tear it up by the roots. Mm. Right? Normally, they just take the top bits, nice tender bits, and just rip mm. it off. It's designed for that purpose. When they're getting out of running out of food, mm. they start getting lower and they'll tear the whole root up mm. right? and try to eat it all natural. Okay, Jesus was the last sacrifice, the Lamb of God. Therefore, as he was a carpenter, it was a carpenter's chisel. Mm. Yeah, it's his own. They took it, right? That's what that's all about. And chiseled the teeth out. Now, they used, from the, the uh, Dead Sea Scrolls, we know that they used flowers to make perfume. Mm. Right? So this is an essential Central tradition. <laughs> they made the sacred oils. Mm. Okay which was going to embalm the body. So all the flowers used, and there was quite a few of them, are placed on the table as a decoration. Mm. We're making a happy here, this is the Last Supper. Mm. Right? And so therefore, once the food was then over, and all the dishes and so forth were cleaned up, the flowers were left on the cloth, and then wrapped up, mm. and placed in the tomb, ready for the crucifixion. Mm. Like, it was all thought out. It wasn't something, oh, if I don't get the app shut, I'm going to get my other cross. No, no. It was all intentional. It happened to happen on the 3rd of April, 33 AD. It had to happen. Right? Why? Because of the blood moon. Mm. And to signify that, around the Dead Sea, they have now found that there was an earthquake mm. left in the terra firma, if you like, of uh, strata that showed that there was an earthquake at that time. Hmm. How they've done that, I don't know, but they do. That's the point. They didn't get it to the day, but they got the period. Yes. Within a six year period. Yeah. Hmm. Right. All right. Now, so therefore, when the shroud is examined, voila, they find 50 different species of pollen and flowers on it. Hmm. 
or native to where it had been. Mm. So the main number of flowers that were on the Last Supper table is found on the shroud itself. Mm. Hello, you're listening, shroud people. Fuck wits. Right? Never think that out. Why? You don't have time. you got the, the crucifixion occurred. Joseph Brown and me have to go to Pilate, who is friends. They cry together. That's in the Pilate report that they were so upset over the lo- losing of the Messiah. They didn't know each other. They didn't know each other. No, no, because Pilate says, who are you, old man? Who are you? And they and both cried together. And, and he saw him crying, weeping, so he, he couldn't stop and he started to weep himself. Hmm. All right, so. They hugged. That, and, they hugged. and therefore he gave permission to take it to his tomb that was already his. Hello. Hmm. Why is it already his? And we prepared for that purpose. Hmm. Right? For Jesus. It wasn't prepared for him. We prepared for Jesus. So therefore, the shroud has now got the imprint because the flowers had been set on the table, been there for two to three days, folded up in the tomb, ready for the burial, which left an imprint, which what is what happens. If you put a flower in your hair, you're going to end up with flower perfume in your hair, right? Mm. You probably end up with a bit of pollen in it as well. Pollen, yes. Right? And even if you wash your hair, it will still remain there because mm. it's minute. Mm. Minuscule, right? It would probably stick to your skull, all sorts of things like that. Mm. Well, think of it from a cloth, it's absorbent. Yes. Well, this is what happened. Mm. So here's the aroma, the imprint, all these things remain to this day, mm. 2,000 bloody years later. They got it. Well, from, from 33 AD to 1978 when they, when they realised it was still had the flowers on it. And they're still looking at it. Right? So, what do we got? We've got the reason the tomb was closed then open put the shroud in several days two days get past and then the body is placed on it it's unwrapped the flowers are still there right the body is placed on it and then we find it had to be closed by 6 p.m because the sabbath started at 6 p.m hmm. they had no time they've got to take it off the cross now, I remember I said to you why the pectoral muscles were up high mm. because of rigor mortis. Rigor so therefore mortis. you say, well, how long does it take for rigor mortis? So you go from time of death, let's call it 3 p.m. Mm. Time of death, rigor mortis takes two hours. They then got to get the body down and put a rope over the top of the upright, around the chest of the... Because you don't want to support, you don't want to just lift the crossbar down with Jesus hanging on it. You want to take the weight off that. Mm. So the rope goes around the chest, which pulls the, pe- the oh, pectoral muscles are up that. like so, as you can see in my body too, as you're looking at it. So the arms are upstretched. Mm. The, these pectoral muscles are up here. Now, when I bring my arm down, what happens? They remain. They remain there. Because mm. the rope's around it. And it's rigor mortis. Mm. That is why the shroud shows rigor mortis. It doesn't show impressions of the buttocks or the back or the feet and the heels against, against a slab. Mm. which wouldn't happen in a rigor mortis situation. It would stay that way. If you lift the body up, it would have all these flat parts on it. Mm. It hasn't got that because the soul of the God, God in from the blood comes in through the shroud. doesn't matter if there's a rock there or not. In all likelihood, the body was stood up and then the soul come in from either side. The angel would have stood it up. Mm. So the, the soul comes in from either side. That's why you've got no marks on the back or the front, rigor mortis, etc. Mm. Because it's the imprint on the shroud is on the outside of the shroud not up against the blood bloody body mm. of leaving little round marks or little little uh, playground type shapes which is on the shroud i've got that exact shape of this of these the flagrum mm. little dumbbells mm. how come that can be it should be pre- pre- profuse blood bleeding it's mm. not it's almost congealed blood almost it didn't congeal because of the um the um when a person is beaten to death, the um, blood doesn't go into that state of congealing. Mm. It remains running. Berry, was it? Berry what? The Billy Reuben. Huh? The Billy Reuben. Billy Reuben. It's the brownish yellow. The Billy Reuben is a chemical that is produced by the body after yeah, it's severely beaten. Extreme. Bit, in trauma. It's trauma yeah. causing. Mm. So therefore, there was no flowing blood on the shroud itself uh, in that situation. So that is why. 
on the back of the shroud and on the front of the shroud, you can now be able to reverse it. The front is the back and the back is the front. And there is a slight image on the part that was against the body because as the blood was caused by the soul to hit this material as it's passing through it, leaving two microns deep on the, which is, look, how, how big is two microns? Mm. Right? A millionth of an inch, two millionths of an inch, or a millimetre? It's, it's uh, tiny. So, we have it all reversed. Now, getting to the point, which I was trying to find, you see as I go off on tangents, We have Matthew 26, 28. Now, you think, all right, what is Matthew 26, 28? For this, Jesus talking, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Okay. So, what do we get out of that? Anything? Well, how about the verse number, 26, 28? 2628 in Greek is the word kat a klothia. Now, think about the word here, klothia. Huh? Kat a klothia. Means to follow after. So he's saying from this point onwards. Hebrew 2628 is the word shakal. And that is means to eat off and consume. We got a bit of a nudge here, not? Hello. So after we have eaten off and consumed off this, it's going to be the shroud of Turin. Mm. Is what he's saying. That's what I said. I remember it. No problem. Now, these didn't occur at that time. The New Testament wasn't written. No. What we have found, um, as you know, we do things pretty thoroughly, and I've always said, Paul, it's bullshit. Right? which is what the structure of the New Testament is based on and why they support the Jews in. Right? I've always said, if you see anything that's a Jewish writer of history, ignore it. Or read it, by all means, and just reverse it. Because they can't help themselves, they've got to lie. It is part of their religion. They can never tell the truth to a Gentile. Because they're the Gentile and we are the chosen people. It's the other way around. They, choose, they reverse everything, we know that. So, what is... Who's the main... What was I discovered last night when I was looking up that internet site, the writings of Josephus. Mm. The writings of Josephus is exactly, precisely the writings of Paul. Mm. Huh? And when was it written? 60. A very long time after yeah. the crucifixion. So it came along way after. Right? Paul, did he actually exist? Well, I think he didn't exist at all. I think they've written it into the script to make it appear to be an existing person. Well, I certainly Saul existed, but the the it seems that the conversion story was that. That's bullshit. Cool. That, the but that, did, that wasn't written for a hundred or so years later. Mm, yeah, the whole thing was because uh, Josephus writes of Saul, and this is. Uh, during the Jewish rebellion of 66 to 74 AD, well, 66 was 33 years after the cross. That's right. And so, so you say, well, when did Josephus write? They probably can't lie about that, hmm. right? They'll lie about what he says, but they is a historical figure, and they rely on him to be able to sway the scholars when they do any investigation of biblical events. Hmm. So therefore, he did exist. Joseph. Yeah, Josephus did, yeah. Right. But Saul, I mean, they're writing about the Jewish re rebellion of 66 74 AD. Right. That was the time of Saul. Yeah. Was it 15 years after the Christ? It was, it was 33 years later that Saul, and he is, um, this is what Josephus had to say. So the men of power, this site says, where did they get their ideas from? So this is for Paul. Joseph, Josephus reports on Saul, an avaricious Herodian aristocrat during the Jewish rebellion of 66 to 74 AD, 
did this nasty soul help the author of Acts flesh out his story of the apostle? So, it's a fiction. This is what Josephus writes. So the men of power, perceiving that the sedition was too hard for them to subdue and that the danger which would arise from the Romans would come upon them first of all, endeavoured to save themselves and sent ambassadors, some to Florus, the chief of which was Simon, the son of Ananias, and others to Agrippa, among whom the most eminent were Saul, and Antipas and Costobarus, who were of the king's kindred, and they desired of them both that they would come with an army to the city and cut off the seditious before it should be too hard to be subdued. So this is comparing. So what's the story element? Saul is a powerful man. Saul gains access to King Herod Agrippa. But now it's comparing it to what has been composed as the book of Acts. Saul is a powerful man, quoting Acts 8.3. Saul made havoc of the church, entering into every house and hailing. Men and women committed them to prison. Saul slash Paul gains access to King Herod. Paul stretched forth the hand and answered for himself. I think myself happy King Agrippa because I shall answer for myself this day before thee touching all the things I'm accused of of the Jews. That's in Acts 26.1.2. And so Josephus writes, Saul of the king's kindred. So Saul is a kinsman of, of um, the king. Uh, anyway, it goes on and on. The writings of Josephus, in other words. I was all invented by Josephus after 70 years because they're trying to commit themselves into a position of protecting themselves from being attacked by the, the uh, Romans. Because hmm. I was trying to clean out the chairs. Which is a bloody good idea, I thought. <laughs> so it's not the Essenes we're talking about. So the Essenes, therefore, were people that manufactured perfumes and, and curing oils, because that's what they did. They were physicians. They were, that's why Jesus said, I'm a physician. Hmm. Physician, heal thyself. Right? Uh, and of course, uh, what you have then is the uh, um, flowers on the shroud, right. and therefore, to get flowers on a shroud, it has to be there for a long period of time, and being fresh, not stale, mm -hmm. a fresh flower then uh, um, imparts itself into the dry um, shroud, which was on the table, mm. which was the last one. Yeah. Then it tells you now. Um, we're looking at uh, Matthew 26, 28. Now, also, Matthew was the first gospel, uh, followed by uh, Mark, I think, and then it was uh, Luke, then it was John. And I make a mistake here, uh, putting John at 95 AD, uh, it's actually 96 AD, and John, there's two different authors in the book of John. Uh, John is written by Martha. Right. That's why you can relate to it so quickly and easily. I did. As soon as I became a Christian, uh, I went straight to the book of John and started um, well, telling people what it was about. <laughs> now, uh, what's interesting is about all this is uh, uh, when you go into the shroud itself and look up the numbers, you take, for example, January 11th, 1944, and you had the area of the shroud called the days, right? 7353. The date that comes up with is Julian Day, 24384454. The height of the pyramid. <laughs> the height of the pyramid. <laughs> so it all sort of uh, is synchronistically, and what I'm doing now, I, I haven't um, explained in full. Um, I'm putting the three mountain heights together as days and see what it comes up with. I haven't done it before. Mm, right. But there are three mountains that are all linked together by distance and location, latitudes and blah, 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 to my birthplace. Mm. 
Right? It means it means the uh, messianic period. Mm. The area within it means a messianic period. Mm. Right? So uh, I keep on doing this sort of things. Uh, seven three five three. See if we can up here. Date. Uh, seven three five three. Oh yeah, okay. That gives you my grandfather's birthday. <laughs> in 1881. No, in 2004. So, it's very interesting how... I mean, I'll do so, a thousand different well, things to find it. Ju what, June the 5th? Which... Uh... Yeah. Um... And on and on we go. But uh, what I'm looking for is Julian dates, distances, areas, uh, heights, uh, latitudes, longitudes. Um, for example, uh, if you take the latitude and longitude of where I was uh, to mature to the age of 942 days, um, I've got this somewhere. Uh, 2004, that was the transition of Venus as well, wasn't it, when you went to Mandura? That's right, it was a transition, that's right. Witness it, yeah. Ah, uh, well, look, look, here, where are they? Yeah, it was that day, same day. Mm. And the distance from where I met Hank, uh, he's a Jew, mm. and an asshole. This mm. is like a German shepherd, you know, <laughs> sniffing out. Uh, the distance is 1694 from my house uh, in Nell Street, which is on a latitude, which is 5813 from the South Pole, height of the pyramid, in, completed in pyramid inches, and 31680 kilometres around the Earth. So it's 1694, <coughs> I think it was miles, yes it was miles, to that point where I jump off the plane and I meet Hank in the car park, and uh, that is uh, Emmanuel in Matthew 123, which has a value of 8880. And it's how old you were on the day that your firstborn was born. Now, um, so we have the uh, latitude in decimals, 33.9175.13 times 151.204380 uh, east longitude. The 3391 is certain man Mm. Certain man, not certain man, mm. Jesus. Mm. So there's the house that I was raised in till I was 942 days old with Jesus' verse title for the King James Bible. And uh, it's also in uh, longitude um, 1512 point, etc. So we're talking inches here, and that is uh, the fetus, the birth, and to lead into paradise, which is the thief hanging by my side, hanging by my on the cross, side. which is the length, and that is why we're going to India, because I have no idea what's going to happen in India, but usually... Uh, We'll probably get off the plane, you'll go for a wee, <laughs> and someone will be standing in the toilet and you'll talk to them and there'll be a miracle. <laughs> the miracle would be if you didn't go for a wee. <laughs> it would be. <laughs> so to speak. But it's something so like that's that. the question. It's always <laughs> out of the blue, it's always odd, mm. it's always not you would least expect to be holy, which turns out to be holy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So it's no longer the question to be or not to be, the question is to we or not to we. <laughs> to we or not to we, that is the question. Uh, all right. Now we're going to time. Oh, we've got a few minutes left. Are you continuing with the shroud? <clears throat> well, there's much more I could do with the shroud. I mean, it goes on forever. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll just... Uh, what I was trying to do to point out to shroud researchers was um, if... If you get your little mind around that there is a God, like you're looking at the shroud and you still don't believe there's a God, 
And now a lot of people, a lot of atheists become atheists because they hate God because their mother died and God didn't save them. Mm. Mm. Right? So they do acknowledge as a God, they just hate God. Mm. So an atheist hates God because he didn't do what he wanted him to do. Mm. Whereas Jesus is saying, take out your cross and follow me. Endure whatever's going to be passing your way. So if you have a child and the child dies, that is your reward because you're an asshole in the previous life. Mm -hmm. right? When you killed a child or something like that. Mm. Right? It's always a balance. Mm. So uh, you can say, well, my life has been hell. Mm. I'm doing it for you. Because it's, it's educating that baby boy to the stupidity of human beings and the suffering that human beings cause one another, in particular me, to be married to and involved with and having children by that are the most abomination abominable mm. and would I have them living next to me or would I live them let them enter the front door? Mm. No. No. So that is life to come. If you're an abomination, be you my child or not, you ain't getting in. Mm. I've got no favourites yet. No? So I think you should take that in mind. You're either it's either in your DNA or it ain't. Okay, it's not your DNA which is formed by a previous life. Right? Each DNA is different from the previous life because you've got different parents. But whatever your DNA is, that's it. It's, it's uh, manipulated by the soul. The soul is a driving force. It is the blueprint for your existence. And if you don't believe in the soul, well, uh, when your soul leaves, your actual body weight changes. But moreover, people look back down on their body and say, oh, shit. Suddenly they realise that which way they're going, and a good movie to look at was that one ghost, right? With Demi Moore and uh, remember the dancer? Mm. Died, died of pancreatic oh, cancer. Yes, yes. I actually wrote to him saying, "Look, I can fix your cancer if you wake up. I'll just do this, do that." Oh no, no, I didn't. Know. Mm. Patrick Swayze. Patrick Swayze. Mm. Right? So uh, ghost is very similar. They do the demons do come and get you. It ain't happy. And there's been people that have survived, been brought back to life, that talk about it. Mm. Uh, a Jewish fellow in particular, mm. he cried and screamed his eyes out, this is what's going to happen to you. Because mm. right? no one listened. It's, on the, it's actually on YouTube. Look up Jewish uh, near-death experience. A uh, guy, blessed Christian Blake, he might have been a rabbi. But he wasn't happy when he came back. Oh, shit. We have no salvation, no salvation at all. Mm. He was a good man. Tell them that. Got to have Jesus or you ain't got it. Shall I begin to read some of Adam's yes. uh, summary? I think so. All right. Summary. Obiter dictum. The considerations of the court are in relation to the shibboleth known as Canonis Apostolica, which is just apostolic canon. In the case regarding the Holy See and BLGM, Many liturgical matters have been examined in consideration of the claim across multiple doctrines of religion that appear to pertain to the claim of BLGM and civil, commercial, legal, equitable, parliamentary and admiralty issues all arising therefrom. It is with copious respect to BLGM that the following summary is written over to a dictum since the case has arisen the requirement for the understanding of jurisdiction held by the court towards itself, the court, to be revised and adjusted so that the writing of this summary could be done since a most unique circumstance never before litigated by a claimant has been presented to the court. The effectual resignation of the court is tendered in supersessional deference to the magisterial superiority that BLGM demonstrates so eloquently in the numerology contained by the commonly known ledger of Yahweh's measurements that has been cross-referenced with the New Testament's own scholarly aid, the Strong's Concordance. This cross-reference has been found sufficient as a statutory instrument within the confines of the Holy See's codified understanding of its own position in the world as those particular churches who promulgate, promulgate the concept of faith as its main tenet, without the necessity for logic and reason alone to disprove their theological standpoint, and thus that this nomenclature, faith, represents as the idea of papal infallibility. 
Indeed, it appears that the meaning of infallibility mentioned in the Catholic doctrine does refer to the concept of faith in those acolytes wherein the executive trustee, the Pope, holds his jurisdiction over the set laws as in the equivalent terms infallibility, executive jurisdiction concerning the faith, which is the settler's terms and conditions. Indeed, it was not for the executive trustee nor his board of cardinals to change the nature of the doctrine of faith as was done in several ways over time. The patrimony of St. Peter of the Papal States under the Psalter of the nomenclature particular churches should have been ref should have been referred the claim of BLGM at the time. In other words, all the people of the Catholic Church should have been referred the claim of Brian Benegalat Imartum at the time of revelation to the Apostolic Signatura, its highest appeals court by the executive trustee of the organisation being of the nomenclature of a name Pope. That's his title. But this did not happen. And then one, BLGM claims to be the Holy Ghost as the, and this is a little bit of correction, but I'll just uh, say this, as the resurrected soul of Jesus Christ, as was recorded in the liturgy of the New Testament to be the contract for Jesus Christ's followers to adhere. In exchange for respecting this moral code represented in the New Testament, the contracted followers of Jesus Christ were promised dividend by means of everlasting salvation as remuneration for such task completed, so long as the unpardonable sin of defaming the Holy Ghost, claimed to be himself in this life as BLGM, is in his claim as the only clause that would negate the individual's dividend should such defamation be uttered. <laughs> Just go to Matthew 12. So this document has been prepared to uh, be handed into the legal department of the Vatican. Yeah, we'll send it to the... Head, head guru there, I think his name's Mambeto, somebody. Um, now, what's interesting is that the dude who is his first secretary, Fabian Padaccio, an Argentinian... Homosexual. Well, we don't know, but probably. Uh, he Apparently, in his own wiki profile, he's on uh, this social site, which is like a dating site called Badu, B-A-D-O-O, has 278 a dating people. site? A dating site, yeah. <laughs> now, you can't get into the site unless you sign up, which I wasn't about to do, but uh, it, it was p as part of his wiki uh, profile. Um, so this is the dude, and he's an expert in canon law, and he looks like a... Um, he doesn't look like a happy man at all. I wondered if he, in fact, was the writer of the emails... Um, as the, one of the thugs hired by Francis, although he's a priest, the thugs said, we are not priests, we are investigators. So anyway, um, number two, BLGM has legally noticed the Holy See as to his evidence for a public rebuttal by the Holy See, but BLGM has received no receipt of delivery nor personal communication about his brief from the papal principal Pope Francis, formerly Mr. George Mario Bergoglio. Three, it is found that the seriousness of the claim should have been addressed to the apostolic signatura on delivery of the apostolic letter in Christum Credunt at the first inset, and that the letter in Christum Credunt holds status as moto proprio, meaning a change to church law under the Pope's authority above the capabilities of the inferior dicastery with nomenclature, Congregation for Divine Worship and Discipline of the Sacraments. Nomenclature just means name. Or as papal encyclical or papal brief is to the superiority of the papal bull or moto proprio. Yeah, they've got all of these hierarchical <laughs> positions within it. Anyway, four, it is also found that in the act of the estate titled, titled Judah, 
having been adopted by the Old Testament acolytes, commonly known as Pharisees, had rendered that the legal and equitable interests of those Judaic estates in lands held by those whom today call themselves Jews has actually all been registered in the name of the plaintiff, BLGM, to which claim the court agrees. It is of grave concern that the family title of BLGM, in brackets, monarchy of Judah, Judaism, Jews, appears to have been hijacked in order that the concealment of the theft to be executed in the form of legal deeds in public paperwork. It is ironic that the unpardonable sin of defaming the Holy Ghost has been passed into law under the standard of anti-Semitism, albeit unwittingly done by the hijackers of the title belonging to BLGM, in order to bring court litigations for profit rather than preservations of ethics, preservation of ethics. Now, number five, it appears that although the Holy See registered as Vatican X4 in the United States Securities Commission, that's the USSEC, should be the highest powerful authority in the world, but by the fact that it is registered within another body, the USSEC, that being the body that's registered within, contradicts the fact that there are some 1.5 billion acolytes to Catholicism to whom sui juris governance belongs that those members of the Catholic Church have been overreached in a transfer of title, whereas the Catholic Church being a public trust means that the situation of overreaching could not occur. Effectively, a public trust has been malfeasantly registered to, into a private corporation, that's what the USSEC is, formed by Section 4 of the Securities Exchange Act of 1934, now codified as 15 U.S.C. 78D and commonly referred to as the Exchange Act or the 1934 Act, which purports to enforce the Securities Exchange Act 1934 and the Securities Act of 1933 and the Trust Indenture Act of 1939 and the Investment Company Act 1940 and the Investment Advisors Act of 1940 and the Sarbanes Oxley Act of 2002 and others. They all have been fomented by the Federal Reserve Act of 1913 as per the reported works of writer researcher Eustace Mullins. This is understood be actus rius and mens rea as a precursive manoeuvre to the corporatization of the doctrine of faith held uniquely by the particular churches. The Holy See is the Pope himself and the Roman Curia are the subordinal hierarchy to the Pope. This explains the idea of seed vacant, wherein a specific appointment to the chair of Roman belief is required to effect the substantiation of its power. That is, the Holy See cannot be held as operational without a Pope at its helm meaning a state of seed vacant, exists as the equivalent term for without proxy. The properly installed Pope being the proxy of God according to Catholicism. Secretariat of State, go back to the 15th century, the Apostolic Constitution, non debet reprehensible of the 31st December 1487, established the Secretaria Apostolica Constitution Tutio Apostolica as a papal bull, dividing into dicastery the principle of infallibility. Pastor Bonus, that is Good Shepherd in Latin, is an apostolic constitution or papal bull promulgated by Pope John Paul II on the 28th of June 1988. Pastor Bonus, a papal bull of apostolic constitution laid out in considerable detail the organisation of the Roman Curia, specifying precisely the names and composition of each dicastery and enumerating which competencies or responsibilities each dicastery was charged with overseeing. It replaced the previous governing document, 
Regimini Ecclesiae Universae, which was released by Paul VI in 1967. Among the changes formulated in the Constitution was the reintegration of the Council for Public Affairs of the Church into the Secretariat of State as the section for relations with states, the second section. The Council for Public Affairs of the Church had previously been a section of the Secretariat of State, but was made an independent dicastery by Pope Paul VI in 1967. The Constitution also opened membership in dicasteries to priests, deacons, religious and lay persons. For centuries, only cardinals were eligible for membership in the organs of the Holy See. But Pope Paul VI allowed diocesan bishops to be members following calls for collegiality at the Second Vatican Council. Pastor Bonus continued the opening of the central government of the Church by allowing representatives of all the faithful to have a role in the Roman Curia. And here entereth the homosexual takeover of the Curia, which was controlling Benedict. The Constitution also opened membership in dicasteries to priests, deacons, religious and lay persons. For centuries, only cardinals were eligible for member... Oh, actually, I just read that. That part has been repeated in the document. Okay. Um, Francis, 2013, and Benedict XVI, 2008. In the apostolic letter, Ministrorum Institutio of the 16th of January 2013, Pope Benedict XVI transferred the governance of seminaries from the Congregation for Catholic Education to the Congregation for the Clergy. On the same day, the apostolic letter Fides per Doctrinem transferred the competence of catechesis from the Congregation for Clergy to the Pontifical Council for Promoting New Evangelization. In October 2013, Pope Francis and his Council of Cardinals were reviewing Pastor Bonus for possible further revisions. On the 24th of February 2014, Pope Francis issued the Apostolic Letter Fidelis Dispensator et Prudence, establishing the Council for the Economy as an entity having oversight for the administrative and financial structures and activities of the dicasteries of the Roman Curia, the institutions linked to the Holy See and the Vatican City State. It also established a secretariat for the economy as a dicastery of the Roman Curia. It is found that the Atonement of the Council for Public Affairs of the Church into the Secretariat of State for the Section for Relations with States was a contravention of the terms and conditions laid down previously and that this action rendering the former Council for Public Affairs of the Church as an independent dicastery subverted the doctrine of faith, that being the foundation of the Trust's existence. Accordingly, it is found, held and ruled that the purport of Mr. George Mario Bergoglio to be Pope Francis renders him to be the New Testament's son of perdition or man of sin in the doctrines espoused by the Catholic Church. That BLGM has also provided a satisfactory alternative explanation of the allegories and tales written in the New and Old Testaments in the form of a most convincing family history concurring with historical document, notably the Dead Sea Scrolls, alongside a theory of cabalistic conspiratorial concealment of that explanation is found to be at least as convincing as the several differing versions of that historicism. It is recommended that those to whom have a relationship with the teachings of Jesus Christ now follow BLGM since his standing on these matters not only unifies that theurgy, but confirms it as a pre-authored clairvoyancy of mystical origin that no humanly caught can disprove or find at fault, and, is, and it is this point at which the court re-examined itself. Indeed, 
BLGM claims to be God as an incorporation, a living being on earth, and as such one would expect the perfection of data to be at least marginally evident, but BLGM's supplied brief of numerical data cannot be deemed anything other than physical proof derived from an etheric and eschatological manuscript where manuscript holds meaning beyond the definition of a handwritten document since the re-examination of the court and its own standing. The estates of the Roman Curia are all held to belong to BLGM via the since-past event where Benedict XVI became Petrus Romanus as per the New Testament, which appears to have been a future contract, and that is the unique litigation that BLGM has claimed for hearing. The Roman Curia, being a conglomerate of dicasteries et al. called congregations et al., should be returned to the author of the contract, notwithstanding that the contract was authored primordially, as the contract now appears disposed by the passing of many such predicted events witnessed, sufficient by the court to have passed as promised in the contract of the New Testament. Congregations headed by a prefect who is most frequently a cardinal. And then there is the listing beginning with the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, the Congregation for the Oriental Churches, the Congregation for Divine Worship and the Discipline of the Sacraments, the Congregation for the Causes of Saints, the Congregation for Bishops, the Congregation for the Evangelization of Peoples, the Congregation for the Clergy, the Congregation for Institutes of Consecrated Life and Societies of Apostolic Life, the Congregation for Catholic Education, for Seminaries and Educational Institutions, then there are Tribunals, the Apostolic Penitentiary, headed by the Major Cardinal Penitentiary, for the Internal Forum, Matters of the Conscience, Absolution of Censures, the Apostolic, rather the Supreme Tribunal, of the Apostolic Signatura headed by a Prefect, the Tribunal of the Roman Rota headed by the Dean, which judges cases such as those brought to prove the nullity of a marriage, Pontifical Councils each headed by a President, the Pontifical Council for the Laity, the Pontifical Council for Promoting Christian Unity, for the Family, for Justice and Peace, for Unum, for the Pastoral Care of Migrants and Itinerants, for Pastoral Assistance to Healthcare Workers, for the Interpretation of legislative texts, for interreligious dialogue, for culture, and the Pontifical Council for Social Communications. Then there are the officers, the Apostolic Camera, headed by the Camera Lengo of the Holy Roman Church, the administration of the Patrimony of the Apostolic See, the Prefecture for the Economic Affairs of the Holy See. Other bodies are not considered dicasteries, but part of the Roman Curia as institutes. The Prefecture of the Papal Household, often referred to as the Audience Office. The Office for the Liturgical Celebrations of the Supreme Pontiff. The Central Statistics Office of the Church. Papal Commissions, of which the following are given special pr prominence. The Pontifical Commission for the Patrimony of the Church. The Pontifical Commission for Sacred Archaeology. The Pontifical Biblical Commission. The Pontifical Commission Ecclesia Dei. The Pontifical Commission for Vatican City State. Okay, though the terms may not as yet be fully comprehensive, the court understands that the incorporate Holy Ghost may refer to BLGM as the performance compelled by the promise. This is where there's a little tweaking needs to come up, uh, as I pointed out. Uh, the promise to send, this is not in the document, the promise to send. The Comforter, the Holy Ghost, by himself as Jesus, also referring to himself as the Father in the future tense, knowing that when he gets back he will be the Father, who is also the Holy Ghost and the Comforter. So it's all past and future. Which is what caused the Shroud of Turin. Which is what caused the Shroud of Turin. Okay, so all of this, all wrapped up, um, so it was a promise to send exactly who he is. Promise fulfilled. Jesus made the promise to send the Comforter, the, go the Holy Ghost, go go he all turns up as the Trinity, the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, heavenly realm of no time, Jesus the Son, Christ, 
the Father and the Son back in the one, the Comforter, teaching all things as the testimony of Jesus. He is the witness. He teaches all things pertaining to the historical Jesus. In other words, he sorts out all the bullshit. <laughs> Let's cut straight to the chase. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, so far as this document is concerned, um, I am not one to walk and say, look, do you have an application form? <laughs> no, this is an eviction. This is an eviction notice. Well, we're doing this to fulfil the demands of the church. They need a legal precedence to stop their spiral Bullshit. into hell, mm. which is written by men of evil intent mm. and good intent that has been subverted by the legal profession working for the Vatican, the which are homosexuals and Jews, mm. for the Roman benefit. Now, this is they, what was it, the reference in Luke? Luke, um, what was it? Luke 22? The lawyers? You want to find lawyers in Luke? Yeah, yeah, you had it uh, yesterday. Hey, do we do for you? Five references. All in Luke. Is it 1152? Okay, it starts off uh, from memory. But the Pharisees and lawyers rejected the counsel of God against themselves, being not baptised of him. Right. That nails it right today, right. what it is to the all Pharisees. And then uh, Luke 11.45, this is not the verse I'm looking for, but we'll read all of them. Then answered one of the lawyers and said unto him, Master, thus saying thou reproachest us also. Hello? was all aimed at, the, aimed at the lawyers, and so it is today. And he said, Woe unto you also, ye lawyers. Today these are the canon lawyers surrounding, hmm. filling the, the Roman Curia. For ye laid men with burdens grievous to be borne. And this is the whole point. And ye yourselves touch not the burdens with one of your fingers. The next verse, woe unto you lawyers, for ye have taken away the key of knowledge. Ye entered not in yourselves, and them that were entering in ye hindered. And it goes on, as, as he said these things unto them, the scribes and the Pharisees began to urge him vehemently and to provoke him to speak of many things, laying wait for him and seeking to catch something out of his mouth that they might accuse him. So it was the lawyers waiting around. Which are Babylon. Hmm. That's why the Babylonian numbering system is based on the number six. So you count on your right hand or your left hand, one, two, three, four, five, change hands, raise one finger, six. Hmm. Go back to your left hand, count again. So now you're up to one, two, three, four, five, and you go across, the second figure is lifted. So what have you done? You got two fives and two ones, hmm. which is a way of saying 12 hmm. on your hands. And so they did it. All counting up to, including the number six, 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 all Pharisee numbering system. Babylon. All oh, right, so it goes on. This is uh, I'm about how, oh, page five of eight. Now, the canon law of the Catholic Church is the system of laws and legal principles made and enforced by the hierarchical authorities of the Church to regulate its external organization and government and to order and direct the activities of Catholics toward the mission of the Church. It appears this mission is complete. Now, he's talking about the mission of spreading the gospel. Um, I said to him, the mission is only just beginning because the, the, the gospel that was to be preached was the gospel of the kingdom. 
Now, the kingdom cannot exist unless uh, the kingdom, the king is in residence. So it, it literally starts again, which is exactly what Pope Benedict saw with the tool of Vatican III, the calling together of the, the flesh bodies um, to convene a Vatican III ecumenical council would be to discuss that the good news, which is what the entire contract of the New Testament is, uh, is about, the good news of the return, the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, who is the Father, who is the now matured grown-up soul that was known as the Son in his day, Jesus Christ, he's back. And so now the kingdom, because the king is in residence upon the earth, taken up his position on the throne, the kingdom has come, can be preached to all corners of the earth. Vatican III accomplishes it. That's right. That's the whole... What the, the key of Vatican III is, is that a church becomes a place of employment. Yes. A place of health. Mm. A place of family. Mm. A union. And also a gospel outlet. A gospel outlet teaching the historical so gospels let's now. Let's say you are a Muslim LGM. and you're in a place like Indonesia, there's no work, you're starving. You can go down the road and there's a church that is printing its money authorised by the Vatican, which is money authorised by God. Hmm. Therefore, you can waltz in there and uh, you're a Muslim. And you can partake of the health services, which has already been laid out and we're demonstrating with yourself up in New Guinea. Mm. Yep, all those PG, simple protocols. All the protocols, doing away with the pharmaceutical Pharma, industry, yeah. which is done by the, the Jews and Yep. And your children can be educated and educated in the proper sciences, which yes. I've been, as a comforter, revealing to you. Yes. Now, you don't have to believe in me or not. Don't matter. But the children who will be going there over a long period of time, they will have to partake of the listening of at least one gospel every week. And as you're walking out of the area where you've been listening to the gospel, whether it's be in front of a television set or a priest or, or a nun or a lay person, doesn't really matter. Or a screen by us. Pick up a little <laughs> bag of money up on the way out. <laughs> which you can then trade with other members of the church that are merchants that use the same money to barter back and forth right across the country or the nations without any penalty of buying something. Let's say you buy something on eBay, for example. Very good idea. And it's delivered to you. You pay for it with holy dollars, mm. with, with holy talents, whatever you want to call it. Mm. Authorised and backed by the Vatican, which is the largest single body where no interest is charged and money is manufactured on the say-so of the Creator, hmm. who is the Comforter back as God in the flesh. Hmm. Huh? Simple. Hmm. So the Muslims can turn up there, the Buddhists can go there. The Buddhists all believe in a Kali type figure or a... The Hindus. Yeah. The Hindus rather. Hmm. Well, the Buddhists do. Yeah. In India, where they would be very willing because they're all starving. The, mm. the, the greatest inroads is to give people something to eat. Totally. And people, don't have to people, bullshit them into, pe, pe, oh, pe, Jesus said this and Jesus said that. I don't care. Yeah. Pe people say, what's the first thing you're going to do? And I thought, fly food in to feed everybody that's starving. Don't wait to grow it. That's right. Bloody, you know, take, oh. take in some... Uh, uh, what did actually? What did I say? That all the flights around the world, like for passengers traveling on holidays and commercial business, whatever, stop until those same aircraft filled with all of their their meals are flown to the nations where people are starving, so they literally get their meals until they are strong enough. And then uh, we take over all the agriculture and, 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 and food is growing. Can you imagine place. like uh, the Hercules bombers all flying into places where the people are starving and just dump it out of the parachutes? Mm. 
Well, they, yeah. Mm-hmm. Little plastic bags dropping from the sky, manna yeah. from heaven, yes. with food in it for the children. Yeah. And for the adults, and yes. we're talking children, all, all people are children, really. <laughs> Already cooked. <laughs> Just rice it, dude. Australia is a perfect growing country. Mm. Man, we talked to uh, um, a fellow the other night. I won't mention names. And he, he believes on Christ. Right? Mm. And he said, but the earth's overpopulated. I said, no, it isn't. <laughs> See him again a few days later. But the earth's overpopulated. No, it isn't. You're talking to God himself in the flesh. And he's saying, it isn't overpopulated. And he's saying, it is. He's also saying, the earth is heating up. I said, no, it isn't. It's getting cooler. <laughs> See him again later on. The earth's heating up, you know. No, it's not. It's getting cool. <laughs> the earth's overpopulated. Bullshit. It's all about the distribution of the resources. All right. Hey. Distribution of information is what it's all about. Yes. Okay, let's go. It's way over time. <gasps> it's almost one o'clock. See you later. Whoa, an hour and a half. Later, Gators. <laughs>